At this moment, likely you have already heard about that drama going around with Mokyu. Likely it's because of that that you are on this video as well. As many of us, you want to find the answer to that question, what about now? Just a side note, if you are not aware of the reason for all this fuzz about Mokyu, I will leave a link in the description, watch the next video, but then please make sure that you come right back here. With all this mess, many of the longtime users of Mokyu are now packing their things up and moving to a different place, but the question still stands, where should we go from here? And that is the question that we will address today. A few months ago, I created some polls asking the .NET community which .NET mocking libraries they were using. The results were clear. Mockyu was the dominant player on the .NET community. That came with no surprise. However, I could notice that N substitutes had an interesting percentage of users. So is it N substitute the one that everyone should be using from now on? Well, if I said that without even considering fake it easy, I would be getting a lot of messages for sure. On those polls, I got a lot of messages from passionate developers that really like to use fake it easy. So my proposal for today is to see side by side and substitute fake it easy against mock you. And then you can see which one sounds better to you. And how are we going to do this? Typically, we use mocking libraries to perform three types of things. Set up expected responses, set up expected calls, and verify expectations. So here we have three different files open side by side. On the first one, we will see how we will do that with Mockyu. On the second one, with end substitutes. And on the third one, with fake it easy. What I want you to notice while I'm showing this code is how expressive is the language. Try to see the one that looks more natural to you to define those expectations. Because mocking is basically defining and verifying expectations. And to be honest, Mockyu was not the best in terms of developer experience. So now you have the chance to pick one that you really like. So let's start by seeing how we define the mock. We will use a different syntax. As you can see here, we are using mock, a new mock of a given interface in this case. And while in n substitute, we say I want a substitute for a given type. It's a bit more expressive. And then with fake it easy, I'm basically writing as a kind of a plain English where I say I want a fake of a given type. One interesting thing is that while with mock, you will define your new mock and you need to do a dot object to access the instance that was mocked. You can see that with and substitutes and also with fake it easy, you don't need to do that. So the return of those methods to create a mock will be the instance of the object itself. And since I scroll down, now we can already see how we can define the expected return of a given method or property. While in mock, you will define here the name of the mock, then you say, I want to set up, then you have a lambda to define which property, which method you want. And then you say, okay, please, when this is called, please return something. With and substitute, it seems a bit more natural to me because I will access the mock, I will do the dot property or the method, and then I will say, please return something. With fake it easy, once again, I use lambdas where I will say call to something that something will be defined inside of this lambda. This lambda will return the thing that we are talking about. I want to return something. So as you can see, it's slightly different approaches. And you can find here other variations of the same thing. This time, using methods instead of a property. So we have seen how to create a mock. Now we have seen how to define the return of a given method or property when a mock is invoked. Next thing that we want to see is how to verify a given expectation. While mock you give you a verify method on the mock itself where that you can provide an expression to define which method are we want to verify. And then you can define, for example, an argument that is optional to check, for example, if it was invoked once, twice, whatever, or never invoked, for example. It's another valid scenario. With n substitutes on the mock, you will call the dot received, specify the number of times that you want to be invoked, for example, one, two, whatever, and then you say the method that you want to do that check. So what I'm saying here is that for the command, I expect it received one request to the executed non-query. If we are talking about fake it easy, it's kind of like the way that we define the return. 
So we say a call to something. The something is defined here inside of this expression. And then we can say, for example, must have happened once exactly. For example, while well, if fake it easy, we'll use the same strategy that we used for the return, where we say a call to something, and then we define the expression to detect that something must have happened X number of times or never happened, for example. At this moment, likely you already noticed that either mock you and fake it easy use a lot of expressions to define what you want to verify, what you want to set up, while with and substitute you have a more fluent language of expressing your intent. There are two more things that I want to show you. One of them is how they handle async methods. Typically, you will be mocking things that are in the boundaries of your system, so they typically will return a task that is awaitable, hopefully. And then if you are defining, for example, an expected return type, you need to handle that. In mock, you have the option to call the method returns a sync and say the value that it should return. You can also do it with the returns without the async part, but then you need to return a task thought from result. While and substitute and fake it easy are a bit more smart about it. And what they do is that they do that for you. You just use always the returns method, you specify the value, and it will handle the fact that it is a task for you. Okay, last but not least, one typical thing that we do when we are verifying a mock besides the fact that we can check if a method has been invoked or not, is which arguments were provided when that method was invoked. With Mocky, there's many ways of doing it, but one of them is when you are invoking the verify, you will say the method that you want, and then you can use this type of expression to say something like it is given type, for example, and then you define the match expression. So I'm checking in this case if the ID of the product that was provided is exactly the ID of the one that I sent to the method that is under test. If we look into what unsubstitute does, it's kind of the same, but this time, instead of saying something like is, we'll say R is. So the argument is a given type, and then we have the matching expression. On fake it easy, things are a bit different. So we are saying that the first argument is a product that matches according to a given expression, matching expression. I expect that now you are inclined to one of those two options. So the next step would be migrating from mock you to either one of those. However, let me warn you that if you restrict yourself to use mock you to those basic definitions of what a mock is, like the ones that I just showed you, migration will be quite easy. However, mock you is an extensive and advanced library where you can configure so many things, and for some of them, you might not find the respective feature on one of those two libraries. And why I am not here comparing every single feature from mock you to the other one? Because what I believe is that you should start a migration, and you will find out that likely two or three percent of your tests you can't directly migrate from one to another but i want to challenge you to rethink those tests are they really valuable are they testing a behavior or are they just checking the flow of the implementation. We have a natural tendency to overcomplicate things that can be simple, so give it a try. Obviously, I couldn't finish this video without telling you which mocking library I will be using, which mocking library I, I have been using. I have not been using mock you for a long time. My most common practice is not to use either and substitute or fake it easy or either mock you, is to implement my own test doubles. And by the way, if you want to understand how we can do do that, make sure you watch this video right here where I explain that. But when I don't implement my own test doubles, what I usually do is to use and substitute. I'm a long time fan and I really enjoy the clarity and how readable are tests written with and substitute. So now, what about you? What you'll be doing? Will you keep using mock you? Are you moving to and substitute, fake it easy, or even another one that I'm not aware of that? I would love to hear from you.